Hello everyone, welcome back to another day here at the Aquarium Project. I thank you very much for tuning in and devoting your some of your day to seeing what's going on here at the Aquarium Project. Um, sorry I didn't do a video yesterday, the day got away from me a little bit, which was not ideal, but I have, hopefully it doesn't happen again, I have a bit of a better plan in place so I can make sure to actually get a video out to you all. Um, on time and so you guys enjoy it. Um, today we're going to be doing something similar to what we used to do which is where I'll walk around and just kind of like show you the fish and you know dry goods and stuff while I talk over it um, just for a bit of more visual stimulation than watching me sit there and talk because today's video isn't going to have too much sort of pictures to go along with it so yeah I mean and without further ado um, let's get into it. Today we are going to be talking about this bad boy here, which is, as you can see, bubbles, or air, or yes, yeah, surface agitation if you will. Um, basically the idea for this is we get a lot of questions all the time um, about whether it is necessary, like whether you need to have bubbles to make your fish be able to breathe essentially. Um, otherwise it wouldn't, like the idea is that otherwise there wouldn't be enough oxygen and the fish are going to just completely essentially die um, without having having the air pump bubbling away and sort of injecting oxygen into the water if you will um, and so I think part of the reason for this is or part of the reason that we get this question a lot wow look at you part of the reason we get this question so much is that in the shop here at least as far as the retail and like sales tanks go but not exclusively but partially um they are all run on what we call sponge filters so in case you're not aware a sponge filter looks like this um potentially this is like one type or there's also like this type here um that is in the back and very hard to see but essentially it's like a little kind of some sort of device where there's a sponge like a generally circular sponge that then has bubbles coming up the middle of it and then the way that works is the bubbles the way the bubbles sort of lift up is it creates a vacuum in the middle and then that pulls the water through the sponge and operates as a filter the reason i use that method of filtration in the shop as far as the sales and retail tanks go is because that way i can run I don't even know how many, there's like 30 or 40 tanks or something like that, all run off solely that one, the, the bubbles, and so I can just connect one big air pump to all of these different filters and run all of them just off the one unit, and so that's good obviously um, in, in a business sense in that it doesn't require a lot of energy, um, obviously the one pump is large but I don't have to plug in 30 different things I can plug in one one bigger one and then that can be enough to sort of power all the filtration units for all the tanks um, and then also so like the benefits of that is like obviously like financially like um, cost savings but then also like you know we're, uh, in an environmental sense we don't want to be using energy that we don't need um, and I mean, there's heaps of benefits. So that's basically why a lot of shops you'll see are running all their tanks off um, sponge filters with like a central air system. Um, so for me, you can't really see it, but my air pump is like tucked in the corner on that big mattress. And then we've got this big, what we call loop, um, which is this big black thing around the top of the room that we then tap into um, to loop the air out. So that's kind of why i do it that way but what we get all the time is like people coming in and they see the bubbles going in the tanks obviously you can see it um i don't have them running at the moment because it's a little bit loud and basically you guys told me it was much easier to hear me when i turned the pump off so i've turned it off for now but basically imagine all the bubbles in this tank or these tanks um what would happen is that then you know you'd walk in and you'd see it and it's like oh so I need that for my tank because you've got that. Otherwise, nothing's going to work and the fish aren't going to be happy. And that is not the case. You do not, 100%, you do not, 0% need, and that word need is important, an air pump. 
So basically what happens in the aquarium is at the surface of the water, at the top of the water here, um, obviously this is the top of the water, you will get the CO2 in the aquarium gassing off, it's called, which is like evaporate, like think of it as like it evaporates out the water from the top where the, where the atmosphere is, and then the atmospheric oxygen or like the air from here will go down and swap places with the CO2 in the water so then it's putting more water uh, oxygen in the water and less co2 um i know that's a very sort of simplified basic way of explaining it but for a beginner i think that's the best way of explaining what goes on so that there is always oxygen going into the water so if you've got like i'll show you this for example i'll make sure not to move too fast but this is the surface of the pea puffer tank here so like as you can see is very 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 minimal ripples and which just comes from the filter um, and yeah that's about it but there's not that many fish in here for the amount of surface area and that's important surface area is what we're thinking of for the amount of fish there's not that much for, um, no for the amount of surface area there's not that much fish so the oxygen is getting exchanged fast enough to keep up with the demands of the fish so we don't need it essentially but so we take that we're fine here but if we go over here to for example a african cichlid aquarium this tank here is not going to have enough surface agitation as it is well just naturally to keep up with the oxygen demands of these fish here so what we'll find is that the fish won't be able to get enough oxygen and so there's plenty of different methods of being able to get more oxygen in the water. So like, for example, this is the uh, what they call a wave maker here, which is just like a pump that pushes the water around. And what that does is it makes all these surface ripples here. And then also where I have, it'll probably be hard to see, but under there, oh no, maybe I can get through here. The, at the back there, uh, you can kind of see it, but not really. The outlet of the water is, um, from the filter is above the water level. So it sprays out all over the top. And what these things mean is that we're disrupting the surface of the water and breaking it all up and swapping the ox uh, swapping the water around and like mixing it better, which means basically that we've got much, much better what they call gas exchange, which is like where what we were talking about before where the CO2 gets traded for oxygen. And so what that means is that gives us a, enough oxygen to let the fish breathe. So what we need to do then is if we have a higher stocking density is break up the surface water so that we can get some more agitation going and get more gas exchange going into the water and so you can do this with an air pump an air pump is a very popular way of doing it because it looks nice um, it's a very easy way to see it and it's very efficient it's a very effective way of achieving this goal However, it is not the only way that you can do this. As I've showed you before, you can put, put your filter outlet above or like pointing out of the water. And then what that'll do is as it splashes back in, it'll create all these little waves and ripples in that, which will mix the water up better. Or you can get a wave maker and blow it up to the top of the water or along the top of the water, and it will just disrupt it naturally and mix it all together. Or... You can do a combination of any of the methods I've said or, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of methods that I've forgotten about that you can use to achieve this goal. So the general answer is no, you do not need, these guys are all sitting at the front very still because I'm doing water change by the way, but they're happy. Um, but you do not need, like, need, need is not the right way to think about an air pump. You need oxygen in the water if you have a small amount of fish they might be fine just as is like with the amount of surface area in your tank you might want to add some more surface agitation by up pointing the filter outlet up you might want to spray get a wave maker because you might like the look of that more or you might might want to get any, some more flow and so it's an added bonus but you don't need an air pump it's I'm uh, kind of a little bit of a call out, but I get some customers in sometimes who say that they've been told that by some other shop that 
you need to get an air pump otherwise your fish are going to die and that simply isn't the case unfortunately it's is a good way of getting you to buy some more stuff and air pumps aren't like they're cheap but they're not like you know they're they are a purchase so it gets more money into the till which i'm not a fan of because i think if people are having more success with fish keeping they'll spend more money naturally it's a joke that goes around in the fish game that you know it's cheaper to be a drug addict so like you know um people always find things to spend their money on so we don't need to be sort of deceiving people and spending more i think if people know what they're doing and know why they're doing it then everyone will be happy and the fish will be happy and so it's a win-win situation you do need the so oh, sorry my arm's getting a bit tired um so when it comes to filtration um nutrition but you don't have i showed you the sponge filters before you can use whatever like um you can use whatever method of filtration it's just you do need filtration like i think sometimes there's a bit of confusion about whether you need you will need either you need the surface agitation from the air pump or you need a filter but you do need at least you like you definitely need a filter it might create enough surface agitation it might not but you a filter is like a hundred percent you need a heater depends on the fish and an air pump not necessary but potentially you might need surface agitation depending on how dense your stocking level is um, but yeah i hope that answers a bit of a, a a question or misconception that i've noticed um just with people coming to ask me and i hope it kind of clarifies in your mind what you need to do to be able to get enough oxygen and where the oxygen actually comes from and how it is sort of sustained in your aquarium um so yeah if you've got any questions about it please feel free to drop them down in the comments below um if you haven't already please make sure to like and subscribe and all that good stuff um it really helps me out and I'd, I'd really appreciate it um but yeah that's all for me from today uh from me for today and i'll catch you later see ya